All right, so we've got a video track here. It's kind of hodgepodge, but it's okay because it's just a test. Let's show you what you need to do in order to export your video um, that you've made. Hopefully you've went through uh, with all the techniques that you've learned and made something nice and took your time with it um, and made it and are ready to upload it. Click File here. Go to the bottom here, and it'll say Export, um, and then Media. So what you're going to do is you're going to click Media, and it's going to export the sequence that you're currently working on. Um, right now, we're only working with one, so you don't have to worry about finding the different ones, the different scenes and stuff. And over here uh, is going to have Format and a bunch of other stuff. All this stuff might look different. Different. It might be a different format, etc. For YouTube, there's a few specific ones that work well. Um, the most common, uh, it's a format called H.264. And you'll want to use this for the majority of the time. Um, there's a bunch of different other ones, but for YouTube, I find that this one works very well for any operating system and um, sets everything up so you don't have many issues. You can match the sequence settings to the video that you are using, but it might not align with whatever you're going to upload it to, if it's Vimeo or YouTube or anything like that. H.264 pretty much works on video, any video platform. So select that, and then you have a preset here. Um, most of the time, you want to just match the source at a high bit rate, um, which the source is going to depend, most of the time it's going to be 1080p. Let's say you have 4K uh, video and you want to upload to YouTube at 1080p, you can go over to where it says high quality 1080p HD and your 4K footage will now be sampled down to 1080p. But we're going to do match source high bitrate because everything but one video track, the timeline is already set to 1080p. So, so all of that stuff is already going to be done. The output name. We didn't change the sequence name when we made it. So this is going to show up when you output it as this crazy name. So click on this and change it to something different. And this is also where you're going to uh, figure out where you want the video file to end up. Um, I have a specific folder for where I render out my videos. Make one and put that video there so you know exactly where it went. Most of the time it's going to default it somewhere and you're not going to be able to find it. So make one where you know where it's going to be and change this. And this is going to be YouTube test. Alright, if you save that, and that's going to save the output name. Here we're going to see the output metadata. Uh, this is just, gonna, just to look and make sure everything's right. And now this next section um, can get pretty confusing as long as you set these up here most of the stuff should be set properly however there are a few things that you can do to make your quality a little bit better and the first one is to make sure that you have render at maximum depth selected this will get you higher quality output the second is the bitrate settings. Now for YouTube, it can vary, but there's a few things you can pick here. And uh, CBR is constant bitrate. That means that throughout your whole video, it's going to play at a certain bitrate. It's the quickest and easiest way. It's the quickest and easiest way to output your footage, but it not, might not result in the best quality. The second one is variable bitrate, one pass, and variable bitrate, two pass. Most of the time, if you've got a machine that can do it, do two pass. This is going to analyze the footage, figure out which parts of the footage have more data to process and less data to process. And it's going to allocate different bitrates to different scenes, or parts of the video anyway, um, that it thinks needs more processing. So that overall, your video size is going to stay one way, but the overall quality is going to be better because in a scene where there's not much moving, there's not going to be as much data allocated to that part of the video, and the bitrate is going to be smaller. 
if that went over your head, basically this results in better quality footage without making the video size uh, really big and cumbersome. The target bitrate on a variable bitrate is where it's going to try and keep it overall. Video YouTube recommends anywhere from eight to ten, um, eight to ten on your bitrate, twelve or fifteen here. So let's go with twelve for the target bitrate, and then use the maximum bitrate as double. So in the complex parts, it's gonna shoot all the way up to twenty-four megabits per second if it needs to, and then other parts might be less than 12, but it's going to try and keep it at 12, and the overall video will be about 12 megabits per second, so your video size isn't going to balloon up. The very last things, you don't have to worry about any of these, use the maximum render quality if you want maximum video quality for YouTube, and then right here, use previews. This will speed up your render time if you've rendered out your video. Um, I'll show you what you can do to render out the videos, make your editing quicker, but that's it. And then from here, if you click export, it will begin uh, encoding the video, doing the first pass and then the second pass, and then it will put and save the file. So that's it for exporting the file. One more thing I'll show you, I'm going to cancel this because I don't, I don't necessarily need this. Um, there's a bar here above all of your video tracks. This tells you whether an effect or a video has been processed and rendered. If it's green, it's rendered ready to go. It's already, everything's been processed already and is at full quality. Yellow means that it's not been processed yet, but it's playable. And then red typically means it's going to be very hard for the machine to play it back. It might not play back at all. You need to render this before you can watch this video. And I'll show you an example by adding, let's add warp stabilizer. <laughs> I'm going to go over here to my effects and then warp stabilizer. And we're going to add it onto this track. You'll see it's analyzing this in the background, but it's also turned that bar right above here red. Um, I'm going to undo that. And let's just say the bar is red and it's stuttering and it's hard to play back. So what you can do is go up here to the top where it says sequence and then go to render in to out. This is going to render all of your video previews so that it will play them back much quicker and smoother. You may want to do this before you do your final export. In fact, I highly recommend you do this before your final export just to see how everything's going to look and everything that everything plays back fine before you completely export it and go through all that time of exporting it. So now everything is this bar is green and everything now that we're going to watch is at full quality. Very nice. It's been rendered and we can <laughs> and we can uh, use these render files when we go to finally export it over here and we click export and use those previews it's going to speed up the process tremendously so there's your basic introduction to editing with premiere hopefully that helped you out and in the next set of videos i'll go over more advanced techniques for those who want to learn more but this should get you started with editing and I hope you had a great time. My name is Sean Michael Jordan. This is Route 1 Reels, and I hope to see you very soon.